Mata coconuts are categorized as medium statured palm. The height of the Mata coconut tree can reach up to 15 meters, with a swollen trunk at its base known as bowl. Mata palm can produce 12 fruit bunches a year, with approximately 12 fruits bearing on each bunch. The average annual yield of matak is 140 fruits per palm. Planting density of 180 palms per hectare will produce an average potential annual yield of about 25,000 nuts per hectare per year, with good agriculture practices and farm management in place. Matak starts bearing fruit from the fourth year of planting onwards, and the economic lifespan of matak may reach up to 30 years. Matak is a hybrid coconut produced through crossing of Tagnanan tall as male parent and Malayan yellow red dwarf as female parent. The seed garden needs to be isolated or free from any coconut pollen of palms other than the intended male parents by a distance of at least one kilometer away in order to ensure the production of true to type matak seedlings. The seed garden is suitable when established on a flat land with well-drained soil to avoid waterlogging or floods, such as light-textured sandy or loamy soil. As sufficient irrigation is the key to success in managing a coconut seed garden, it must be located adjacent to a water source to supply irrigation. The male parents Tagnana used for crossing are selected with several criteria. 1. The mother palms that have reached full bearing stage at 8 years and above with a stable yield. Two. The mother palms should be consistently giving high yields that are uniform throughout the year. The bearing habit that assures production of at least 80 nuts per palms annually that are free from pests and disease. The female parents Malayan Yellow Dwarf MYD and Malayan Red Dwarf are to be selected based on several criteria. 1. The mother palms that have reached full bearing stage at 5 years and above to ensure its good quality. 2. The mother palm should be consistently giving high yields that are uniform throughout the year. The bearing habit that assures production of at least 80 nuts per palms annually that are free from pests and disease. The male flower is harvested from the selected palm of male parents, in this case the Tagnanan. A matured inflorescence is usually fully exposed from its spade between 21 and 25 days starting from the spade development. Male flowers of Tagnanan are removed from the spikelets. Weighted male flowers are put onto a 90 cm length by 90 cm width by 2.5 cm height aluminium tray with a thickness of 1 mm. Male flowers are conditioned in a drying room at 33 degrees Celsius to 38 degrees Celsius for 36 hours with 46% to 50% humidity. The dried male flowers are slightly crushed and sifted using a 48 to 54 mesh per centimeter square covered sift to separate the pollen from the male flowers. Harvested pollens are weighed and recorded accordingly. 
A total of 4.5 grams of collected pollens are put into a test tube with a lid cap and kept below freezing at minus 10 degrees Celsius. Storage duration for the pollen must not exceed 6 months. Before controlled pollination procedure commences, testing pollen viability is done to determine its fertility percentage. Procedures are begun by 1. Putting pollen onto a petri dish with PDA medium using a sterile swab. 2. Petri dish is covered and left at room temperature for 3 hours. After that, it is observed under the microscope in order to calculate fertility percentage or rate. Only pollen with above 80% fertility rate will be used for pollination. Emasculation is the male flower removing process from the inflorescence of the female parent, MYD or MRD, to avoid occurrences of unwanted self-pollination. The emasculation process is conducted by 1. Selecting a matured spathe by identifying the spathe that is swollen and spikelets that are about to crack or burst. 2. Dissect and remove the spathe. 3. Emasculation is usually done by cutting the spikelets at 5 to 10 cm above the female flowers using a secateur or knife. The male flowers found in between or adjacent to the female flowers should be removed by hand. 4. The remaining male flowers between the petiole are gathered and cleared as well as those on the ground. 5. Emasculation date, number of female flowers, number of spades for the current year at petiole are recorded. 6. The removed male flowers are collected in bags and brought out from the seed garden. Before pollination procedure commences, the area of female flowers must be sprayed with water-based insecticide to prevent insects. Pollination is carried out when the stigma of the female flowers become receptive, parting from the stigma and secretion of nectar. The most ideal time for carrying out artificial pollination is in the morning, starting from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., since maximum stigmatic exudation occurs during that time. Matured female flowers can be recognized as the tip of the stigma is open and produces clear discharge. Pollination on dwarf trees can be done using a soft brush. Pollination is done by applying the Tagnanan male flowers on matured female flowers. All the female flowers do not attain receptivity on the same day, so the above process should be repeated every day for 5-7 to seven days until all the female flowers in an inflorescence become receptive until all the stigmas turn brown or black. The most ideal time for carrying out artificial pollination is during the morning hours starting from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. since maximum stigmatic exudation occurs during that time. Meanwhile, pollination on tall trees is done using a puffer which contains a mixture of pollens with talcum powder at a 1 to 10 ratio and sprayed onto the female inflorescence. Pistillate flowers becoming receptive during early morning hours which shows a reflexed moist stigmatic surface and the nectar is secreted at the base of the stigma and pericarp. Each pollination activity details must be recorded such as inflorescence numbers in the current year, emasculation date notes, day, month, year and total number of female flowers on nearby fronds. Mature nuts can be harvested 11 to 12 months after pollination. The suitable fruits for seed nut are selected according to several criteria. 1. Fully matured nuts that possess dry husks with a distinct browning of inner fibers. 2. Seed source must be obtained from certified parent palms. 3. Free from incidents of pests and disease. 4. Gurgling sound of water can be heard from within the nut when shaking. 5. The nut shape and size should be normal. Any type of damage to the nuts during harvesting should be avoided. 6. The circumference of the nut is not less than 40 cm. Harvested seedlings are stored under the shade at 50% of light intensity. Storage duration of a coconut seedling should not exceed 30 days. 
Before the coconut seedling is sown, the coconut pulp stem must be removed in order to expedite the germination process. During the drought season, the coconut husk is chipped to ease water storage. Meanwhile, during the rainy season, the coconut seedling is not chipped to prevent fungus infection. Selected coconut seedlings are arranged on a sand riverbed with a thickness of 15 to 30 centimeters. Nursery beds should get changed every three rounds of seedling process. The nursery site should be shaded with a net at 50% light intensity to protect the coconut seedling from scorching heat. Seed nuts are arranged closely in a row of 10 nuts per row at width and appropriate number of nuts at length accordingly. For example, 10 nuts arranged at width with 50 nuts arranged at length will result in 500 nuts for a plot. Distance from one to another plot is 1 meter. Coconut seedlings should be sown by positioning the broadest part facing to the ground. Coconut seedlings are placed on a sand trench of 10 cm depth and covered two-thirds of its part with sand. Maximum duration for seedlings to be at the germination site is three months before moving out to the seedling site or polybag. Matak hybrid seedling is produced through cross-pollination. Therefore, seedling selection must be done at the stage of germination on site. Seedling selection is carried out within two weeks' time up to three months after sowing. Selection of seed nuts is based on the color of sprouted shoots with indications of source of parents. For example, one, green color shoots are crossbred between Malayan yellow dwarf MYD coconut and green Tagnanan coconut. Two, golden color shoots are crossbred between Malayan yellow dwarf MYD coconut and orange Tagnanan coconut or crossbred between Malayan Red Dwarf MRD Coconut and Green Tagnanan Coconut. 3. Reddish-orange shoots are crossbred between Malayan Red Dwarf MRD Coconut and Orange Tagnanan Coconut or Malayan Red Dwarf MRD Coconut and Golden Tagnanan Coconut. Matak hybrid coconut seedlings must be cultivated on a sand riverbed with a thickness of 15 cm to 30 cm. Nursery beds should get changed for every three rounds of seedling process. The nursery site should have a net cover with 50% light intensity to protect the coconut seedlings from scorching heat. Coconut seedling is planted with a distance of 45 cm in length by 45 cm in width in a sand trench of 10 cm depth and covered two-thirds of its part with sand. Seedlings are arranged in an appropriate size of plot, for example, 5 palms in width by 20 palms in length results in 100 seedlings in a plot. Distance between the plot is 1 meter. Seedlings at nursery sites are suitable for distribution after reaching 4 months of age. Maximum age for coconut seedlings at nursery site is 12 months. Each nursery bed should have recordings as follows. 1. Date of plantation or cultivation. 2. Block or area of harvested fruits. 3. Total number of coconut seedlings per plot. Culling process and management of seedling nursery site. The culling procedure is carried out after 120 days of sowing. Culling is a procedure where abnormal seedlings are eliminated. Characteristics of abnormal seedlings are as follows. 1. Number of leaflets is between 2 and 4. Total number of leaflets for a normal seedling is 5 to 6. 2. Height of an abnormal seedling is less than 45 cm. 3. Frond color is not green, golden or reddish orange. 4. Short, too far apart and spiraled leaflets. 5. Long, straight or small frond peduncle. 6. Twin seedlings. Sufficient watering is important at the seedling stage at the nursery site. Seedlings need to be watered twice a day. Lacking of water will stunt the growth of seedlings, while overwatering will promote diseases. Suggested watering system is by using a sprinkler system.
Manual weeding is carried out once a month. Pest and disease control must be done according to the Integrated Pest Management Method, IPM. Fertilization is done after the weeding procedure. Suggested fertilization is as follows. 1. Folio fertilizer is sprayed when seedlings reach 30 days of age and repeated every 15 days. Appropriate spraying hours are early morning between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. 2. Compound fertilizer NPK 15 to 15 to 15 is sprinkled approximately 10 grams per palm after 90 days on a monthly schedule. The Madak Hybrid Coconut Seedling is ready for planting as soon as it reaches 4 to 12 months old. Selected seedlings should have the same color at the frond base and leaflet strand. Green, golden, reddish orange. Only certified palms are allowed for distribution. Production of Madak Hybrid Coconut Seedlings begins with seed garden selection to seedling production and takes at least 16 months. Each process requires meticulous steps in order to ensure the characteristics of every palm, nut and seedling complies correspondingly, producing excellent seedling quality. The standard procedure is to ensure seedling production that will generate productive Mata coconut palms in order to meet market demands as fresh produce or coconut-based downstream products. Planting Mata Coconut from high-quality seedlings can produce up to 25,000 nuts per hectare per year at the age of 9 years and above.